minutes per minute. 121 though, that's like really top. That is the highest I have ever gotten in my life, 121. Usually I type around 60, 70 words a minute. Adora, do you, this, this is for my benefit because they don't believe me. Do you type with your hands correctly on the keyboard or do you hunt and peck? Yes, yes. I, I don't I don't go like that, if that's what you want to know. I, I go like that. Um, Actually, I used to play piano, and as anybody here who plays piano knows, you have to do it kind of like that, and so that was a good experience. I quit piano, though. Uh, just, but no, here, I can show you how I type. Um, let's see. Oh, actually, it doesn't show the keyboard too bad. Yeah, sorry, the camera would go over there, but um, I, I do type correctly. Emma, do you like writing um, first person or do you like to look on um, or do you like to write on um, third person? That is an excellent question, and actually I've never gotten that one before, but it's an, a really good question. Um, I tend um, so uh, first person being I, me, and third person being uh, them, um, and and so so. But um, I tend to write in first person. So as you saw when I was writing about. Uh, the obstacle I saw, I said, I did this, I did that, instead of Adora did this, Adora did that. Um, yes, I would say I like to write in first person more because it lets me, uh, it makes me feel more into the character. At the same time, third person is good because it allows you to do all the little did she know and have that uh, big spectrum. So I usually write in first person, but third person is a nice way to write as well. For your personal narrative, you're going to be writing in first person. You're going to be saying, I did this, I did that, because it's from your own point of view. Yes, I do go to school. I go to the Washington Virtual Academies. It's an online public school. Um, so it, it's a lot like a regular school in that we have teachers, field trips, homework, but it is that the curriculum is delivered online. Are you skipping class for this? No. Um, since I do go to an online school, I'm able to access classes um, pretty much any time. Nicholas. Where do you come up with all your ideas for your books and stories? Where do I get all my ideas for my books? Hmm. Uh, a lot of the ideas. Now, uh, I could say, oh, my ideas come from my head, but no, my ideas, I get them mostly from the things that I see around me. So, for instance, um, a lot of the characters in my books are, um, are inspired by people who I know or people in my family. And I really get inspired by watching the news as well, seeing things that are happening, current events always inspire me to write. And uh, so definitely the things I see around me, what's going on in the world. Right. Is it legal for you to, um, is it legal for people your age to um, publish books? Yes, there, there is not a law saying, oh, 12 can't publish a book or 7 year old can't publish a book. Um, yeah, so, so it's absolutely legal. to bed every night, uh, and I grew up just with books everywhere, and I thought, hmm, well, I love to read, maybe I should give writing a try, and when I was four, I started writing uh, short stories, and uh, sometimes little poems, and, and so my first attempts at writing weren't that great, but the thing is, with practice, it you really start to improve. I wouldn't say practice makes perfect quite yet, because I'm not perfect, but I definitely practice helps um, a lot, and it helps you climb that ladder as far as skill goes. Um, so I read a lot and I started writing um, pretty early and, and I wrote every day. I would say that really helped me. Titus. Do you ever get tired of writing? Do you ever get tired of reading and writing? Do I ever get tired of reading and writing? Uh, not, not very often. I have to say, sometimes if I've, if I've just like written 10 pages, I'll say, uh, 
that's enough for now. But usually I'm just really into both, I, and it's hard to get tired of them because there's constantly new material, there's constantly new things to read and write about. I'm sorry? Next question. Of all the books you've written, which one's your favorite? Of all the books I've written, which one is my favorite? Well, the two I've published, uh, Dancing Fingers and Flying Fingers, uh, it's difficult to say which one is my favorite because one has short stories and one has poetry. So it's kind of hard to make the comparison. I would say that I like both fairly equally, but I do have a favorite story in Flying Fingers. It's called The Spoiled Prince. It's called what? The Spoiled, and the Spoiled Prince. Prince. Yeah. It's actually um, based on somebody I know. Uh, the Spoiled Princess. <laughs> How do you brainstorm? How do I brainstorm? I, um, it depends really on what story I'm writing. If it's a, if it's a pretty short story, I usually kind of just collect my ideas in my head, uh, write a little bit about who the main characters are going to be. If it's going to be a long story, sometimes I think more about it. I might make a, um, a, a document and I write down who the characters are going to be, a little background on each one. I really enjoy doing that. Um, and and uh, how, how I want the beginning, middle, and end to go. So what? Now, one of the things that I do also is um, sometimes I just start writing without too much plan. It really depends on how much brainstorming I want to do. And, there, and it really um, also depends on how you like to write best. So if brainstorming uh, uh, really helps you quite a bit, then by all means do it. If, if you feel like you don't need as much brainstorming, but maybe do a little bit, that's okay too. So there are really lots of different ways um, to go about it. But I usually um, will write up something about each character a little bit uh, and make a bit of a point. Kyra. Um, how do you have time to be a kid when you're like writing at least one book a day and reading all those books a day and stuff like that? Oh, um, I. That's a very interesting question. How do I still have time to be a kid? Well, I actually I don't write one book a day. I do a lot of writing, but I wouldn't say that I manage to make one of these every day. Now it takes me. It would probably take me like a year. Um, but. I, yeah, I would say I still have tons of time. I write maybe an hour, two hours every day, and I do uh, my schoolwork online, but uh, the rest of my time I'm able to just play around uh, the house, cause trouble, play with my friends, you know, be, uh, doing, uh, annoy my parents, normal kid stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I definitely still have time to be a kid. flexibility, so I do um, a fair amount of traveling. I go traveling uh, every, I would say, every three or four months, and so it allows me to access my schoolwork when I'm away, uh, when I'm doing video conferences, for instance, like that is during school hours normally, and so I'm able to access it um, at any time, so I do like the flexibility. What is your biggest secret of writing? What is my biggest secret of writing? I love how you're saying our biggest secret. Um, uh, I, I would love to say, oh, it's secret, I can't tell you. But I, I wouldn't say I really have any huge secrets or huge um, secret formulas. Um, I would say that definitely it is a lot of practice. You need to write um, really every day in order to perfect those skills and to become better. And another thing is that you uh, don't have to just think, oh, I need to write something that people will like. You can write stuff just for yourself as well. And remember when you're writing that you are, have power and that you have control over what you can write. So your parents can tell you to take out the garbage in your life, but in writing you can tell your parents to take out the garbage. There are lots of uh, fun things that you can do in writing. And remember that writing isn't boring. Writing really gives you that control and it can be very fun. And one more question. Alright, Aubrey. Have you 
Have I ever wanted to be something other than a writer? Have I ever wanted to be something other than a writer? Oh, yeah. Um, let's see, when I was five, I think I wanted to be an architect until I found out that being an architect involved math. <laughs> that it was different. Sort of, I, I wanted to be, um, let's see, I wanted to be a, uh, I think I wanted to put out fires and uh, drive a garbage truck. I know that seems like a weird aspiration. Um, this is a, be a princess, a ballerina, you know, normal six-year-old, four-year-old stuff, uh, fiber. And um, yeah, so I always had a ton of aspirations other than writing, but writing has been one of the things that I've mostly wanted to be. I think at one point I wanted to be an actress. Um, yeah, so there were definitely uh, lots of things I wanted to be other than writing, but um, writing's been the longest lasting of them. Oh, well, uh, yes, and I actually can make one more question. What is my best selling book? Well, uh, Flying Fingers has been out much longer than Dancing Fingers, so Flying Fingers right now is my best selling book. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll get pretty close to because Dancing Fingers, it was released not too long ago, and so uh, maybe, uh, and so sales of that I'm hoping will reach Flying Fingers eventually at Fosford. Well, thank you very much for asking all these questions. Does the teacher have any questions or comments? No. no. Great. It's fabulous. Thank you very much. I hope that you all enjoy writing your personal narratives and ace your state writing assessments and beyond. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed talking with you. You're such a great group, and I'm happy that you learned so much. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.